Katie Hopkins is my guest for this hour, Exonation, www.hauntedroadmedia.com. And uh, first of all, Katie, I want to thank you so much for joining us. It's been a great pleasure talking to you. And uh, I enjoy people, I enjoy talking to people who make sense. And you, young lady, make a lot of sense. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> all right, Katie, uh, I asked you if you could give us an idea or help our listeners, if anyone is listening uh, around the world tonight, and they just don't have the ability right now to find somebody who is as cool as you are in the area <laughs> where they live. What can they do until they find a paranormal investigator or investigation team that can help them out? What are their do's and their don'ts? Yeah, the first thing I would say is document. Write down what you're experiencing, mm -hmm. um, the time of day you're experiencing it, how often you're experiencing it. Um, to really get the notion on how repetitive it is, um, you know, whether it be a knock on the door, whether it be you hear a voice, um, whether it be you feel something weird, um, anything that you think could be paranormal, write it down. Um, secondly, if you don't want it to um, come out more, limit your communication with it because you opening up and communicating can definitely bring spirits out more. Um, to, I mean, because you're opening up that that line mm -hmm. of communication, which sometimes they're looking for, and if you give that okay, they may say, "All right, let's let's go." They said, "Yep, I'm good to good to talk." Um, go buy an audio recorder. That is that is a huge thing that you can do um, for yourself, and you know, record and listen back. Um, you know, you can try. Doing a few, it, it, this is again communicating, but this is what we do on investigations. If you really want to know right away, you can do what's called an EVP blast and you ask a few questions, listen back to it. If you don't want, again, to open that line of communication, just set that audio recorder out and don't even ask questions. Just let it set for a few hours. Go back and listen to see if you've caught any voices or anything. Um, you kind of turn into your own paranormal investigator, I guess. Um, and, it, you know, again, if you if you do that and you're just not quite sure, have get another set of ears. Let somebody else mm -hmm. listen to it to see what they hear. Um, but, again, I think the biggest thing that you can do for yourself is, is document um, and really just finding out what those experiences are that you're having. What about... Uh, you know, a lot of people in the days and years gone by would go to the church and they'd ask a, a member of the clergy to come over and and help better understand what could be going on. Are people using the clergy as much as they used to compared to the the, uh, the people who are calling on paranormal investigators? Sure. You know, I haven't. I've heard a few people come to me and say, "Yeah, I reached out to to my church." Mm -hmm. um, I, I think it depends on what you're experiencing. I mean, the ones who think they have a demon in their house, yeah, they are usually going to the church and trying to figure out, um, you know, how they can help them. I haven't seen it a lot in my own experiences, though. I think a lot of people do come to paranormal investigators first. Mm -hmm. um, and if that's recommended from a paranormal investigator, absolutely. I mean, I think people can still do that depending on, you know, clearly what religion and things they are. But um, I haven't seen it much in my own experiences, though. People who go to uh, garage sales, they go to antique uh, stores, and they go to uh, auctions. Is there a danger, unbeknownst to them, that may, they may be bringing a spirit into their house that is that is uh, attached to that piece yeah. of furniture that they bring home? <laughs> I love that question. Um, myself and, and my husband, um, Adam Tillery, and his wife, Hannah, um, we went to an antique shop down in Lawrence, Kansas, mm -hmm. and we found, I don't even, it, it looked, it was a box, and I don't know what it was used for, but it had some really, really weird carvings on it. Um, but absolutely, people should be cautious when they're going into those types of stores and buying these things, because you do never know what's attached to it. Um you know, and that always, you know, comes to like Ouija boards too. People go find Ouija boards in these places and they're looking for that. And, um, it's really, yeah, I, I think you should be, be cautious in what you're buying, but you don't, you don't know what's connected to it. And if you do buy something, mm -hmm. sage it, do something to try to, you know, at least clear energy from it. If there would be something connected to it. All right. Now, you know what saging it is. I know what it is, but the members of the mm -hmm. audience may not. 
know what sure. it is. So could you explain that to yeah. them, please? Yeah, um, just using sage to it, – it's um, used to cleanse energy. Um, so when you go – you can go buy white sage, a bundle of white sage. I personally use sage spray. Um, I use that a lot just because – I, in some locations you really, you can't burn things. Mm -hmm. Um, and if you need to get something cleared away from you or, um, again, if it's in someone's house and they don't want you burning stuff in their house, you, you at least have a sage spray, but it's just a way to clear, um, energies. And it's even okay to sage yourself sometimes. Um, because if you're in a location that has so many different energies and those kind of connect or, you know, just pile on top of you. You can sage yourself to to rid of those energies. Do, why do most paranormal investigators do their investigations at night instead of during the day? Is it because the spirits the uh, the spirits take the day off and they only work at night, or <laughs> or is it because the paranormal investigators work during the day and they only have time at night? That that could be one of the reasons, but it's the ambiance, of course. Um, <laughs> you know, we've actually done a few day investigations and have caught some pretty cool stuff. Mm -hmm. um, when I was at the Russell House, majority of the experiences that I had were were during the day. Um, there's no time set on a on a spirit clock. They can do whatever they want whenever they want. Um, you know, I think it's just kind of the the way that people think of the paranormal and and should do things at night i guess um but then you're in the dark of course and yeah, i think it's just kind of it sets the mood <laughs> yeah um do the spirits ever get tired of people of humans coming and disturbing them at all hours of the day and the night because the humans want to thrill oh yeah yeah and we've experienced where we've done that honestly i think at the russell house they got sick of people <laughs> um because it, all of a sudden, you know, we have so many experiences and then all of a sudden it's just completely dead. Um, but, yeah, I, I definitely think they're just they're just like people. And, you know, if you had somebody coming into your house every day bothering you, looking for you, mm -hmm. you'd want them to leave, too. And you'd want a you know, a break at some point. Yeah, but I can't do that. They're my kids. <laughs> um, in your experience, are there more male ghosts? Or female ghosts, or is it kind of split 50-50, or it depends where you are? Ooh, that's a good question. You know, I'd probably say it depends on where you're at. Um, I mean, when I was at the Russell House, I felt there was more female presence mm -hmm. there. Um, the, the young daughter who passed away, uh, she was only five years old. She fell down a cistern, and, and she drowned. Um, she was there quite a bit, and the mother was there quite a bit. Um, the manor... Probably more male, mm -hmm. Edinburgh Manor. There's probably more male dominance there. Missouri State Penitentiary, I'd say more male dominance. Um, I, I really, do, yeah, it depends on the location that you're at and the types of people and who the people were that were there. I've noticed uh, that there are more and more paranormal teams that are getting rather aggressive with spirits. They yell at the <laughs> spirits. They challenge them. Is this something that, that you subscribe to? Oh, no. Uh-uh. Um, we, at any event of ours, um, we always tell people, do not provoke the spirits. And the way, in the, I guess the example that we give, I say, you know, there's somebody standing in front of you and they're yelling at you. They're yelling profanities. They're calling you names. Mm -hmm. What are you going to do? You're going to walk away. You're sure. not going to, or you're going to punch that person in the face, either or. It's not going to be a pretty situation. Um, so, yeah, no, we, we do not provoke. We always tell people you shouldn't because honestly it may deter your activity plus you know showing disrespect to the dead exactly. is not a very nice thing to do we've got about two minutes left what are your final thoughts to the XO nation tonight about being a paranormal investigator um i love it i've enjoyed it um i've met my husband mm -hmm. <laughs> i mean it's a lot a great way to meet people and um who are have similar minds and um you know, it's something, like I said, it's something that's always going to have have something there for you. It's it's going to be ever-changing, and it's going to um, always be there. So I've, I've enjoyed it for many years. I mean, I've been in it, I guess, officially for six and a half. But um, I, I say if you're interested in it, something that you think you might like, start getting involved. Over the past six years that you've been doing it, what has been, if any, of the the changes that that you've noticed within the within the paranormal community when it comes to investigating spirits? Um, 
You know, that's a, that's a good question. Um, I've, I've noticed, you know, like we're just talking about like the whole provoking Mm -hmm. thing. Um, you know, I think that that's definitely for me, I guess in the people that I've investigated with, um, I've seen that calm down. Um, I've seen more people become more open to it. Um, whether it be, you know, they're open to their abilities that they have or whether it be they're just now opening up to say, okay, maybe there's spirits out there. Um, my mom is one of those people. <laughs> um, when I first, you know, started in this, um, I, she wasn't a skeptic, but she wasn't as much of a believer, I think, as she is now. Um, but don't forget, she also gained something very valuable through your paranormal investigations, and that's a son-in-law. Yeah, yeah, and and soon to be grandchild. There so. you go. Well, congratulations. You <laughs> and I have you. to say so long for now, Katie. Thank you so much for sharing your time with us and your expertise and your experiences. An explanation, if you'd like to get a copy of Katie's book, Seeing Spirits, Open the Empathic Door. It's available, I believe, on Amazon.com. Or you can visit her website at www.hauntedroadmedia.com. I'll be back on the other side of this commercial break as we continue here in the X-Zone with yours truly, Rob McConnell, from our broadcast center and studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Don't go away. Whether you're a skeptic or a believer, join me, Rob McConnell, as together we'll investigate the world of the paranormal and the science of parapsychology here on the Exxon Radio TV show on XZBN and the Exxon TV channel on Simul TV. Since 1990, the Exxon Radio TV show has been the place where people dare to believe and dare to be heard. Together, we'll investigate UFOs, aliens, ghosts, Bigfoot, Psychic phenomena, lake monsters, conspiracy theories, government cover-ups, the truth embargo, alien abductions, ESP, haunted locations from around the world, and so much more. With over 28 years of broadcasting and more than 4,500 individual guests, the X-Zone is truly a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality, as evidenced by the credibility, integrity, and professionalism of the guests that we bring to our international audience. If you have seen a UFO, had a close encounter, seen a ghost, Bigfoot, lake monster, or a story that you would like to share or have investigated, contact me, Rob McConnell, by sending me your email to xzone at xzoneradiotv.com or you can call toll-free 1-800-610-7035, extension 143, and on Skype, Exxon Radio TV. For more information on the Exxon Radio TV show with yours truly, Rob McConnell, visit www.exxoneradiotv.com or www.exxonetvchannel.com or simultv.com and xzbn.net. Until next we meet here in the X-Zone from our broadcast center and studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Always remember X-Zone Nation. Keep your eyes to the sky and your heart in the light. You have heard of the X-Zone? Now watch it on Simul TV. Plus 500 video games, live TV channels, free video on demand worldwide and more does this sound like tomorrow's television well it is but you can have it today right now it is simul tv simul tv offers what the others only wish they could provide 15 exclusive channels like exxon sci-fi and horror we are worldwide no other provider offers that 500 built-in video games no need to have an extra expensive system we have them included free video on demand live streaming events from around the world, interactive online network, and much more. Tomorrow's TV today, Simul TV. Sound too good to be true? Well, it's not. You can have Simul TV today. Sign up at simultv.com. Do it today.
Welcome back, everyone. Katie Hopkins is our guest this hour. Her website is hauntedroadmedia.com. And Katie is the author of Seeing Spirit, Open the Empathic Door. Um, when you go out and you do an investigation, I, I'm a little perplexed here because earlier you said that you really don't think that whatever the cause or whatever the investigation will is is going to do will never be uh understood or found out and, and you go into great depth and you go into a lot of hard work and and dedication mm -hmm. in what you're doing as a paranormal investigator if you don't think you're going to find the answer is it the thrill of the hunt that keeps you going that's part of it um that, i mean that's definitely the adrenaline mm -hmm. of course that's it's exciting and again you know, finding the, the new things that you can. And I mean, I, I believe in it and I right. believe in, in the paranormal, mm -hmm. um, you know, the thrill keeps me going, but yet the hope and whatnot of just documenting what we can for ourselves and for others. I mean, we help people on investigations as well. Um, that's what keeps me going is because of what, what I believe mm -hmm. and, what, um, you know, what others believe. I mean, there's so many people in this field and also the fact that, that we can help people, whether they be living or whether they be, you know, deceased, um, we've helped both. So huh. having that is, is something to definitely keep you going. All right. This is a two part question. How can you help someone who's deceased and how can you help the living? Sure. Um, the living, I mean, pretty simple giving them answers if we can i mean as long as there's activity and as long as we can um you know document things for mm -hmm. them it always gives them a peace of mind um we've helped a few people here uh I, i'm in cedar rapids iowa um and we've helped some people here just understanding that is there spirits in my house or what's going on in my house um and just getting the the comforting feeling that whether these spirits are um positive negative etc um that's typically how we help people a lot of the times when we help it's it's on those residential investigations um helping the deceased whether it be they need to understand that they are deceased um maybe they need to cross over um we don't cross people over uh personally but we know people that that have done that and we usually reach out to them um and just being an ear for, you know, someone who's passed away, if they just need to tell their story, it's just little simple things like that. How can somebody not know they're dead? That's a really good question. Um, you know, those who have passed by traumatic experiences, they may not know. Um, you know, I've asked myself that same question, too, and, and we talk about this, um, you know, to to people. And... Um, I don't know if it's ever going to to be something that we can fully answer because we if we're talking to you know someone who is deceased, um, are they going to to tell us how they didn't know? you know I, but I would say a lot of the cases that um, you know people have have said, you know or you know do you know you're you're de dead and whatnot are ones that usually have a traumatic experience and we're not expecting death. But how do we know that they don't know they're dead? Right. That, we, we may not. I, I mean, like I said, spirits can tell you whatever they want. <laughs> um, that's, that's their, their fun. But um, wait a sec. You, you said spirits tell you. Mm -hmm. how, do you how do they talk to you if they're dead? You know, well, we have the wonderful audio recorders. Um, sometimes when, when I am you know, able to, to visualize these spirits. Mm -hmm. I do hear, you know, words, things like that, but, um, you can result in a medium. Um, Vanessa Hogel is definitely one that I, I trust and have worked with. Um, it's really, you know, it's, it's the little things that, that they can just, I guess when I say tell it, it could be, you know, whether we're just getting the feelings or whether they are able to speak with us through a, a device. It's just um, how they're able to communicate. What is the general message that is that is obtained from those on the other side? Um, it really depends on the spirit that you're you're talking to. I mean, we've talked to 
or well, I guess I'll, I'll use better terms here. We've we've communicated um, and had experiences with multiple um, with multiple spirits. They've been negative. They've been positive. Um, and you know, general message. It really can't give you a general message because it's different per per spirit. I mean, some that I've I've witnessed, I guess. Um, I've had you know some messages come across that you know I just I want to say hi to my family, um, or it's, you know, this is what happened to me. Um, a lot of the time spirits like to talk about them and, um, you know, tell, tell you their story and, and how they can do that again, whether it be through, you know, empathic feelings, whether it be through an audio device, um, it really is going to vary per spirit though on, on what their message is that they want to get across. A lot of people in the paranormal community are, are using, uh, or or are giving more examples of negative encounters with spirits, and they're talking about demonic spirits a lot more. Mm-hmm. Uh, what's going on with that? Is it that the spirits are getting nasty, or does the sensationalistic aspect of demonology kind of add to the allure of the paranormal? I, the demon talk. <laughs> that one always gets... You know, I think a lot of people... and and. I've actually had people reach out to me telling me I have a demon in my house. And I say, well, mm-hmm. what makes you think you have a demon in your house? Well, I'm always uncomfortable and I always feel this and this. I say, you know, maybe you just think it's a spirit there. You know, Jim, tell me exactly why you think it's a demon. Um, I, I think it's the sensationalism of it. I mean, there's so many, you go on Netflix and all you see are shows about oh, demons. Sure. Um, and I think it's just, that's, it, it's, for some reason that excites people and I don't really understand why. Um, I don't know whoever would want to encounter a demon. Um, and I mean, we've had people, you know, post pictures and well, this is a demon. And I again say, you, you have to definitively tell me why this is a demon because it, because it has red eyes or because, you know, you just feel it. Um, I, I think it's really, people get excited when it comes to thinking of demons and that it, it just, uh, yeah, like you said, it is sensationalized, um, and it's just that's what people see in the shows. That's mm-hmm. what people see in the movies, um, and that's when people see the most experiences happening in those. And I think that's probably a, a big factor. You know, you're you're in the beautiful state of Iowa, but how can people <laughs> around the world listening tonight, if they believe that they have paranormal activity in their home, how can they find a credible investigator? Because the internet is filled with. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I've often said that the Internet is the largest septic tank that man has ever created <laughs> because there's more crap in it than anything else. Mm-hmm. So how would somebody go on the Internet or where would they look to find a credible paranormal investigator to help them out? Yeah. Um, oh, you know, we have a lot of people reach out to us mm-hmm. um, to ask you know, if we're not in their area. They'll ask, do you know anybody um, that's in my area? You're right, though. It's really hard to find one on the Internet because you don't know what these people's intentions are. Um, We always say if some if you're asking somebody to come in your home and um, try to, you know, do an investigation or whatever it may be or just Mm -hmm. for advice um, and they ask for payment, run. (laughs) Don't ever pay someone to investigate your home. I I mean, that's one thing for us, at least. Um, We would never charge somebody to come for us to come there and and help them with something like this. Um, It's a really it is very hard to find somebody credible by by searching on the Internet. Um, I would just say try to find someone you trust that might know someone in the field um, and just do your research and, and really look at their I always go to people's evidence, too, and I look at um how they're documenting evidence. Are they, um, you know, fudging things? Mm-hmm. Are they, are they saying something is concrete paranormal when you're looking at it and you, you see, again, you, maybe you see matrixing or maybe it's a, a flashlight that's reflecting somewhere. And then you can clearly tell, um, it, that it's so hard to know who's credible and who's not. We have to take our final break in a, in about a minute. And uh, what I'd like you to do when we come back is 
give our listeners some idea what they can do to make a situation that they're in, if they believe their house is, has some paranormal activity in it, until they can find a credible paranormal team to come in and give them a hand. Would you be able to do that for us? Absolutely. All right, Exxon Nation, my guest this hour is Katie Hopkins. She's the author of Seeing Spirit, Open the Empathic Door. And her website is www.hauntedroadmedia.com. That's hauntedroadmedia.com. And Katie and I will be back on the other side of this commercial break as we wrap up this hour here in the Exxon from our broadcast center and studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Just a reminder, the X Chronicles newspaper for August, September is now available online with our compliments at www.xchroniclesnewspaper.com. And if you do not want to buy, if you do not want, there is no charge if you do it online. You can read it online, download it online. But if you'd like to have a print copy, there's only one place to go, and that's Amazon.com. Katie Hopkins and I return on the other side of this break. Whatever you do, don't go away. Broadcast studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, to the world and beyond. You're watching the Exxon Broadcast Network, www.xzbn.net. AVS Media. You have heard of the Exxon? Now watch it on Simo TV, plus 500 video games, live TV channels, free video on demand, worldwide, and more. Does this sound like tomorrow's television? Well, it is, but you can have it today, right now. It is Simul TV. Simul TV offers what the others only wish they could provide. 15 exclusive channels like Exxon, Sci Fi, and Horror. We are worldwide. No other provider offers that. 500 built in video games. No need to have an extra expensive system. We have them included. Free video on demand. Live streaming events from around the world, interactive online network, and much more. Tomorrow's TV today, Simul TV. Sound too good to be true? Well, it's not. You can have Simul TV today. Sign up at simultv.com. Do it today. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the X-Zone Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the X-Zone Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere. 24-7-365. Rob McConnell here, presenting an overview for Nicholas Paul Jinnick's author of a fascinating book, Amen. It presents facts revealed by Egyptologists, facts that enable us to understand why Amen is the beginning of creation of God. It provides recommendations for religious leaders of the major religions to unify their beliefs and teach the Word of God, love one another. Amen informs people how mankind conceived God, it was the Egyptians that developed the concepts of a soul, a hereafter, and son of God. And finally, after the worship of many gods, they conceived the belief in one universal God, the maker of all there is. For more information, visit www.futureofgodamen.com. That's www.futureofgodamen.com. Okay, 
Katie Hopkins is our special guest this hour, Exxon Nation. Her website is hauntedroadmedia.com. I, I understand that you met your husband in a very strange way. <laughs> I did, yeah. Um, my husband and I met back in September of 2012, mm-hmm. um, actually on a paranormal investigation. So I went out to um, Edinburgh Manor. His uncle uh, is the owner out there, and he was doing the tours and... That's kind of where we all, where we kicked off our, our love interest. <laughs> well, now we understand who grabbed your leg. Yeah. <laughs> Wasn't at the, the manor, though. That was at the Russell <laughs> House. Completely two different, two different locations. <laughs> Katie, what has been your most interesting experience when investigating the paranormal? Share that with us, if you could. Um. Well, I mean, my husband and I have been on multiple investigations together, and the one that definitely sticks out as the most interesting, um, gosh, it's really a tie between two different locations. Um, But at Edinburgh Manor, it was my husband and I, we were out there, and it was just him and I, and we were sitting in the hallway on the second floor. And there's a room up there. that had a a door stop in it and it was a board and all of a sudden we were standing in front of this room the board comes flying out at us by our feet Mm -hmm. the door slams and we first were kind of baffled because we're like how did this board go flying at us when it should have went with the door if the door was just closing you know because of the door stop not working um and all of a sudden after that we heard footsteps upstairs, which was the attic, which is completely insulated. And the only thing you can walk on up there are these small board beams. And it literally sounded like there were a herd of elephants above us. Um, and then all of a sudden that stopped, <laughs> kind of startled us a little bit. So we ran um, for the back door, but then remembered we didn't have the keys mm-hmm. to get back in if we run out the door. So we had to run downstairs and, and get everything. Um you know, it wasn't an experience where I saw a spirit, but it was an experience that is always going to stick in our minds because I, it was just un, unexplainable. Um, probably to date, that's the, the most interesting experience I've had. Okay. Um, when you go out and do an investigation, uh, how do you do it? Like you said that you and your husband go out on investigations, and when you say you do that, uh, what kind of investigation is it? What do you do? What equipment do you use? Uh, What are you hoping to accomplish? Sure. Uh, You know, starting off, we like to get a feel of the building with just EMF reads um, with a K2 meter or a Mel meter, Mm -hmm. um, just figuring out where those high EMF readings are so we know could this be contaminated, et cetera, or is it going to give off more energy for the spirits to use? Um, we're pretty simple people on investigations. We find the less equipment that you use, the more personal experiences you get. Um, we know that doesn't document a lot, um, but for ourselves, we get to document it in our minds. Um, and you know, we used to use spirit box a lot. Um, we've kind of gone away from that a little bit just cause it, it messes with my brain and makes my brain all jumbled. Um, but, you know, and a lot of times we just use, like I said, we use our own, our own selves to just get feels for the building, get feels mm-hmm. for the spirits that are around. I mean, being an empath, you feel it and, and you can see it. Um, the experiences that I've had um, as an empath, a lot of the times we may have had a camera going, but we didn't have a lot else going besides an audio recorder. Um, we're still big audio people, too. I mean, 99 percent of the uh, evidence that you catch is going to be audio. So that's a, a big one that we use. Um, we do use EMF pumps and, um, you know, again, still K2 and stuff like that, but we're pretty simple on our investigations. What's an EM, EM, EMP pump or an EVP pump? What, what was that? Oh, um, an EMF pump, it's um, electromagnetic field pump where mm-hmm. it pumps out electromagnetic field for the spirits to use uh, to whether it be, you know, they're going to show themselves or just need it to say a few words. It just gives them more energy. How do we know that this actually works? Um, you know, I guess it, that's just up to you to decide. Um, but, I, I mean, there has been studies and, and people who have looked into this uh, to sh- 
again, yeah. it's hard to to put it as definitive because it's it's the paranormal. But yeah. um, it, and I mean, if it was normal, it it wouldn't probably be as as of a hype. But it's just you know, there's been studies and and things out there that say that this gives out more energy for spirits to use. Now, when you say there's studies, are we talking about scientific studies uh, from accredited universities, accredited members of the science? Or are we talking about uh, those who have a lot of experience within the paranormal field? Sure. Um, well, to be honest, um, a lot of the studies I haven't looked into. I just mm-hmm. have known that there's some out there. Okay. I'm sure there's some parapsychologists out there who have done some studies um, on, on this. But, uh, I mean, I just use and and go off of what i've experienced and you know we have used the emf Mm -hmm. pumps before and that's when we're getting you know quite a few personal experiences or maybe we're catching an apparition or um catching more evps so it's just just kind of the the trial runs i guess now the the evidence that you're that you're gathering Mm -hmm. is it physical evidence is it actually evidence that you can catch on camera and share with people or is it um like the evidence that everybody has with evps sure we actually have um a variety Mm -hmm. of different pieces of evidence and that's on the unknown darkness website um we have some visuals we have some audio clearly there's gonna there's a lot more audio um but we did catch a really great um shadow person at Missouri State Penitentiary and you can clearly see it on on the um picture that we have there um you know we have again pictures we have some videos and things like that too of whether it be things moving um we have caught some videos on our DVR camera at Villisca Axe Murder House of a Shadow walking by still need to get those on our website and I'm slacking on that but um yeah we have multiple different pieces of evidence that people can see what is a shadow person? Shadow person is just um, it's it's your apparition without um, without features. <laughs> um, it's just they're able to manifest as a shadow. Mike Ricksecker would be awesome to talk about shadow people. He does a whole lecture on them. Um, but it's just your it's a lot of what people see um, in the paranormal if they are seeing mm-hmm. it, you, spirits. Um, they're probably the easiest to manifest if you're going to have a physical seeing of, of a spirit. But um, it's just the, uh, I guess it's the energy of, of that spirit that is able to manifest themselves as a shadow. How much of this that we're talking about, the shadow people, how much is this of what the person wants to see compared to what the person is actually seeing? That's a really great question. We get that a lot. Yeah. Um because we do talk about how spirits manifest as um, as what you as what they want you to see, um, but also I think you know there are some people out there that get super excited. I, mm-hmm. I'm kind of I went on a different aspect of your question, and I apologize, but it's okay. um, you know I think the more skilled and the more experienced you get in this field, you're going to be able to knock out that excitement of I think I just saw a shadow or you guys, there's a shadow over there, but it's really, you know, matrixing or something. Um, I, I really, I think the people who are new to this field and have that super excitement, you know, just that's, that takes up their energy and takes up their, their minds. Um, they, they could be seeing what they want to see and not actually what they're seeing. Um, we didn't see this shadow figure in front of us when we were there. We actually weren't even in the building. Um, we caught it on our DVR camera and, and were able to get a still shot of it. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, there are going to be people out there new to the field that have more excitement um, that makes them want to mm-hmm. see what something and it's it's completely different. That's why we we always get more opinions and more ideas on on what we're seeing. Why is it when there are groups that go through these uh, various uh, tours and haunted locations that some people in the group see or experience a paranormal event and others don't? Uh, some people are just more susceptible to it. There's there's people out there that almost have a block up and mm-hmm. they just can't have an experience. Sometimes it's the skeptics. Sometimes it's the full believers because they want to have an experience so bad. They're the ones that, that don't. Um, it's just all in, 
you know, the, I think it's a one in your openness. I think you have to be open in this field in order to see, because spirits are going to sense that if you're open or if you're closed to it. Um, in, and like I said, you know, me starting out when I was 10 years old, I kind of grew this susceptibility to spirits at an early age. Um, and I think just the, the way your mind allows you to be open to it, um, allows you to have maybe more experiences. All right, you and I have to take our break at the bottom of the hour. Exonation, Katie Hodgkins, Hod, Hopkins is our guest this hour. <laughs> www.hauntedroadmedia.com. And Katie and I will be back after this news break as we continue here in the Exxon from our broadcast center and studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Don't forget, you can check us out about all the programming we have available, 724-365 on the Exxon Broadcast Network at www.xzbn.net. And we're coming to you around the world tonight on the Exxon Broadcast Network, Talkstar Radio Network, Mutual Broadcast Network, iHeart Radio, Simul Radio, and Simul TV. I'm Rob McConnell. This is the Exxon. Don't go away. on Simul TV, plus 500 video games, live TV channels, free video on demand, worldwide, and more. Does this sound like tomorrow's television? Well, it is, but you can have it today, right now. It is Simul TV. Simul TV offers what the others only wish they could provide. 15 exclusive channels like Exxon, Sci-Fi, and Horror. We are worldwide. No other provider offers that. 500 built-in video games. No need to have an extra expensive system. We have them included. Free video on demand. Live streaming events from around the world. Interactive online network and much more. Tomorrow's TV today. Simul TV. Sound too good to be true? Well, it's not. You can have Simul TV today. Sign up at simultv.com. Do it today. Whether you're a skeptic or a believer, join me, Rob McConnell, as together we'll investigate the world of the paranormal and the science of parapsychology here on the Exxon Radio TV show on XZBN and the Exxon TV channel on Simul TV. Since 1990, the Exxon Radio TV show has been the place where people dare to believe and dare to be heard. Together, we'll investigate UFOs, aliens, ghosts, Bigfoot, psychic phenomena, lake monsters, conspiracy theories, government cover-ups, the truth embargo, alien abductions, ESP, haunted locations from around the world, and so much more. With over 28 years of broadcasting and more than 4,500 individual guests, the X-Zone is truly a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality, as evidenced by the credibility, integrity, and professionalism of the guests that we bring to our international audience. If you have seen a UFO, had a close encounter, seen a ghost, Bigfoot, lake monster, or a story that you would like to share or have investigated, contact me, Rob McConnell, by sending me your email to xzone at xzoneradiotv.com or you can call toll-free 1-800-610-7035, extension 143, and on Skype, Exxon Radio TV. For more information on the Exxon Radio TV show with yours truly, Rob McConnell, visit www.exxoneradiotv.com or www.exxonetvchannel.com or simultv.com and xzbn.net. Until next we meet here in the X-Zone from our broadcast center and studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Always remember X-Zone Nation. Keep your eyes to the sky and your heart in the light. The X-Zone Radio Show with Rob McConnell is largely an opinion talk show. 
All opinions, comments, or statements of fact expressed by Rob McConnell's guests are strictly their own and are not to be construed as those of the Exxon Radio Show or endorsed in any manner by Rob McConnell, Relmar McConnell Media Company, the Exxon Broadcast Network, its affiliated networks, stations, employees, or advertisers. All Hit Radio Welcome to the X-Zone, a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell. And welcome to another hour of the X Zone. My name is Rob McConnell, and we're coming to you from our broadcast center and studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. If you'd like to send me an email, X Zone at X Zone Radio TV dot com on all social media sites, X Zone Radio TV. If you'd like to find out about the programming we have available for you 24 7, 365 on the X Zone Broadcast Network, www.xzbn.net. And for the broadcast schedule for the Exxon TV channel on Simul TV, www.simultv.com. Exxon Nation, my guest this hour is Katie Hopkins. She is an avid paranormal enthusiast and historian. She graduated with her Bachelor of Arts degree in history, specializing in Civil War history in 2010 from the University of Northern Iowa. She also has her Master's of Science in Higher Education from Kaplan University. She's been involved in the paranormal field since February 2012, but has always been intrigued by it ever since she was a little girl. She loves to research the locations uh, the Unknown Darkness team investigates. She's been to many haunted locations in the United States to investigate, the farthest being Old South Pittsburgh Hospital in Chattanooga, Tennessee. She plans to continue her research for a very long time and hopes to find some of the answers uh, that people really want to know about the paranormal. Joining me now is Katie. Uh, and Katie, welcome to the X-Zone. Thank you for having me. What was it that happened in February of 2012 that put you into the situation where you said, darn it, I'm going to do it. I'm going to become a paranormal <laughs> investigator. Absolutely. Well, yeah, um, February 2012, it seems so many years ago. It does, um, yeah. I was working at a museum mm-hmm. um, two years you know, out of college and wanted to get that history experience in, so I, I applied for the Grout Museum um, and got a job there. Um, I was working as a museum assistant, and they basically said, hey, Katie, we want you to manage the Rensselaer Russell House Museum. I said, you got it. I'm, I'm excited. It's history. I love Victorian history. Um, I'll do it. So I was sitting there, and working on projects, mm-hmm. multiple things, um, there and would hear noises, um, would hear footsteps, voices, multiple things. Um, and also right, you know, uh, actually a few months before that, uh, I was getting a tour from one of my friends. I was actually just an intern back in, it would have been December, 2011. So even going back a little bit further, um, one of my friends was a tour guide there at that point, and she mm-hmm. gave me a tour, which intrigued me to apply later on. And my um, the back of my calf was grabbed, and that kind of made me jump, startled, and I said, okay, what's, what's going on here? <laughs> <laughs> I had always believed in the paranormal. I mm-hmm. loved, you know, ghost hunters, whatever, but um, – and I had had experiences as a child, but this one kind of revamped everything for me and said, okay, maybe there is some, some things out there. Um, so that was my first big experience as, as an adult, at least, um, that triggered me to be sitting here and talking to you about my book. <laughs> All right. Now, what were some of the uh, paranormal experiences that you had as a child? Um, the first one that really sticks out to me, um, it's, it's in the book. It's one of the first things that you'll read about. Um, 
I was over at my neighbor's house and he had just recently passed away. Um, my brother was actually friends with their grandson who stayed there with them um, quite often. And we were over there visiting and I look over and there's this rocking chair in their basement and I see him rocking in the chair. And I knew he had passed. I was about 10 years old and I knew he had passed away. So uh, being a 10 year old though, I'm looking at this like, what in the world? I mean, how am I seeing him sitting there? I don't understand it. I mean, being 10, you don't research the paranormal, um, especially back in the, you know, mid to late nineties. And so I'm looking and I just, I kept seeing him. He was sitting there rocking back and forth. And there's a really great illustration of that in the book. Um, I don't know if you know Adam Tillery. Uh, he did all the illustrations in the book. He has a book with Haunted Road Media as well. But um, he did an awesome job at, at recreating that experience for me. But that's the one that definitely sticks out to me the most and that inspired me to um, begin the book um, and kind of continue on with the paranormal later on in my adulthood. Now, what is the name of your book that our listeners might be able to go and check up after the uh, show? The name of my book is uh, Seeing Spirits, Opening the Empathic Door, um, again, by Haunted Road Media. You can find that if you type in Seeing Spirits, Katie Hopkins, and Amazon. I should pop right up. <laughs> so it's Seeing Spirits, Opening the Empathic Door? Yep. Why do you call it an empathic door? Oh, that is a great question. Uh, well, when I was deciding the the title of mm -hmm. this book... Um, you know, I I looked at it as my own way of how I became further as an empath um, because it was like I was going through a door and a door opens, you know, slowly or opens mm -hmm. quickly yep. and mine kind of just gradually opened. And by the time that door was fully open, I had had so many more experiences as an empath. Um, so it's almost kind of a metaphor and, and a looking, you know, how, how some people go into this. Um, at first my door was closed. Then I had an experience that mm -hmm. opened it a little bit further Then another one that opened it a little bit further. And now it's completely wide open. So, um, yeah, that's kind of what, what intrigued me to use that, I guess that phrase for that. How would you describe yourself as an empath? You know, I, I really just, I, I grew so much within the last probably four years as an empath and my, my, how I describe myself, I guess, is more, I can visualize spirits. It, they come to me. It's not like I can channel and pull them out. It just comes to me in my mind. Um, and that's why when you see the book, you'll see seeing in quotations. Mm -hmm. um, because I don't channel. I, I'm not a medium. I, I don't consider myself a medium or psychic. Um, I can just visualize these spirits as they come to me and see distinctive features and feel their emotions and their, their different um, feelings that they have. So... I don't know the right word for how to describe it, but that's how I, I am as an empath. So is, are your empathic abilities limited to the spirit, or do you also have empathic feelings when it comes to people who are alive? Oh, people who are alive as well. Yes, I <laughs> can definitely feel them. Um, I mean, and, and it's, we do lectures and things. Um, you know, one, I, I do them now for Haunted Road Media with my book, um, but also as, as a team through unknown darkness, we've done multiple lectures in the past. And I always describe to people when they're trying to figure out what an empath is. Mm -hmm. I say, you walk into a room and it's filled with a bunch of negative people. You feel their energy. You're just like, Oh my gosh. You know, it's kind of like cutting the tension with a knife. You can feel that and you, you want to get out or maybe they're super positive and that puts you in a better mood. Um, so that's how I always actually describe first off to people who are learning about this is how to feel that. Um, but yeah, I can feel both uh, past and, and living. <laughs> why, why do you think the paranormal is so popular here? We are in the year in the year 2018 in a highly technological society. Why the paranormal? Why do you think it's so popular? 
I think because it's intriguing and there's never going to be a definitive answer. Um, Wait a sec. Wait a sec. Hold on here. If there's not going to be a definitive answer, (laughs) what are you people looking for then? Right. No. Um, Well, you know, it's it's all it's all part of belief, Um, Mm -hmm. you know, and and we have the tools and we have the you know gadgets that we go out and look for for these things. But I think that it's going to be a never ending thing because it's so intriguing there's always something new um you know there's always different spirits that you're going to run into um whether it be the same location or or you know a different location um we've had multiple experiences to where a certain spirit follows my husband and I to different locations um and it's just something I think that it's you really don't get sick of it because there's always something new and there's always something intriguing about it that pulls people in. Um, I, I really, I back in, you know, 2004, 2005, I probably would have said it's because of the TV shows, but, um, being in this field now, but we all know that those TV shows are fake. (laughs) There's some interesting aspect to those TV shows for sure. Um, and when I say interesting, I, I'm, yeah, I've, I've dealt with a few of them. So, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but you know, I think again, there's always going to be something new. There's always going to be research. There's always going to be something to find. And- Katie, Katie, I hate to cut you off, but we've got to take our first break. Please stand sure. by. Um, Explanation. Katie Hopkins is our guest this hour, www.hauntedroadmedia.com. This is the Exxon. I am Rob Connell. We're coming to you from our broadcast center and studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. If you'd like to send me an email, exxon at exxonradiotv.com is my email address. And don't forget, the X Chronicles newspaper for August, September 2018 is now available with our compliments at www.xchroniclesnewspaper.com. And uh, the title of the front page says it all. They lied. I'll be back on the other side of this break. Don't go away. Whether you're a skeptic or a believer, join me, Rob McConnell, as together we'll investigate the world of the paranormal and the science of parapsychology here on the Exxon Radio TV show on XZBN and the Exxon TV channel on Simul TV. Since 1990, the Exxon Radio TV show has been the place where people dare to believe and dare to be heard. Together, we'll investigate UFOs, aliens, ghosts, Bigfoot, psychic phenomena, lake monsters, conspiracy theories, government cover-ups, the truth embargo, alien abductions, ESP, haunted locations from around the world, and so much more. With over 28 years of broadcasting and more than 4,500 individual guests, The X-Zone is truly a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality, as evidenced by the credibility, integrity, and professionalism of the guests that we bring to our international audience. If you have seen a UFO, had a close encounter, seen a ghost, Bigfoot, lake monster, or a story that you would like to share or have investigated, contact me, Rob McConnell, by sending me your email to xzone at xzoneradiotv.com or you can call toll-free 1-800-610-7035, extension 143, and on Skype, Exxon Radio TV. For more information on the Exxon Radio TV show with yours truly, Rob McConnell, visit www.exxonradiotv.com or www.exxontvchannel.com or simultv.com and xzbn.net. Until next we meet here in the Exxon from our broadcast center and studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Always remember Exxon Nation. Keep your eyes to the sky and your heart in the light. You have heard of the Exxon? Now watch it on Simul TV, plus 500 video games, live TV channels, free video on demand worldwide and more does this sound like tomorrow's television well it is but you can have it today right now it is simul tv simul tv offers what the others only wish they could provide 15 exclusive channels like Zone, sci-fi and horror we are worldwide no other provider offers that 500 built-in video games no need to have an extra expensive system we have them included 
free video on demand, live streaming events from around the world, interactive online network, and much more. Tomorrow's TV today. Simul TV. Sound too good to be true? Well, it's not. You can have Simul TV today. Sign up at simultv.com. Do it today.